questions of your leaders, teachers, and preachers. Far too long you have stumbled in darkness searching for light. We have a man in our midst who can bring forth true fact beyond doubt that can open the eyes and ears of those lost in darkness. As Saeed El Imam Isa had the he is that man and the author of over 150 books of a religious and scientific nature. As Saeed El Imam Isa had the he has brought forth this information straight from the scriptures. So it cannot be denied. So we invite you to listen, to learn from the true light featuring As Saeed El Imam Isa had the نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الوالي الكريم وصلى الله على أنبياء أجمعين والمسيح والمحتي والمجدد لمن مرسلين Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it and that he is alone and has no part and that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes. All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of his prophets and his apostles. And on the Messiah, the anointed one. And on the Mahdi, the guide. And on the Mujaddid, the reform, which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. You are now listening to The True Light with As Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. Understanding that the cherubim are of the negative angels and the seraphim are of the positive angels, and they are people who are spiritual descendants of these two natures then why is it so hard for the people who feel that they are of the seraphim to dwell in the tabernacle? All of those people that are seraphim are magnetically attached to the community. Regardless of how far they travel, or what they see, or where they go, they have this desire to come into the tabernacle. Anyone who is at the door of the tabernacle is just listening. Like the Quran says, there are angelic beings who listen at the door when the Holy Quran is being recited only to take those recitations out and pervert them. Many people, whether they're black or white, have become cherubim when they were seraphim by nature. Even the angel himself, Azaz and Lucifer, was an angel of pure light. He chose to go bad. So black people can go bad. So when you stall at the gate, Shaitan gets the best of you. He catches you when your consonance is down. He stands at the door, it says in Genesis, and waits to your, for your consonance to drop. He waits at your weak points. He sends out slanders like he did to Job. He kept sending different men in his image to tell Job how the Lord has killed his family. And he kept saying, I alone have survived to tell you this. You've got to be careful because many people who have the essence of a seraphim, a seraphim are, are the pure archangels for those who want to know, and the cherubim are the wicked angels who fought against them before judgment. Many of them transform from angels of pure light into angels of fire and never even know it. Still say they're Muslims, still with the dog, still say they're praying. That's another mistake a lot of pale Arabs tell people that shaitan doesn't pray. That's not true. Shaitan will pray and his evil servants will also pray. And they will come in a masjid and pray next to you. They will read with you the Quran. They will try to guide you through the scripture their way. They'll not guide you on the Surah al mustaqim They'll not guide you to the covenant. They'll guide you their way. And they'll keep on telling you this is how it really is. This is true Islam. This is the real way because the majority of the educated Arabs accept it. All those people who are educated in those different universities of Al-Islam are not the ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides. Those are the ones that professors and teachers of different schools of thought guide. It's a big difference. So the point I'm trying to make is a seraphim knows where he belongs and goes there. Your father, that's why he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. When that spirit was restored to David, when he had his soul restored, he said, he restored my, 
my soul. Then he followed by and leading me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You see that? And he also left by saying, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Not I'll dwell outside with my opinions. And you better be very careful, especially you people in there who might be sincere, about those people who sit at the door of the community. They've been in, they observe a certain amount, and they sit at the door and pretend they're here and they're out teaching just like us, pretend they're us, never have no intentions of being in here. They're more of the devil's children, they are of Ansar. They have came in and have turned back. The Quran refers to them as the Munafik. The Munafikan, or some people translate it as a hypocrite, or the real word is Munafik means a divider, a divider. He divides himself from the community in certain aspects and pretends he's in with us in other times. He says he's with us, he says he's like us, he says he believes in the teachings, he says he'll, he'll, he, uh, the Imam he says his leader, etc, etc, but he's not in. He says, because I don't like this, and I don't like that, and this doesn't go this way, and I heard this, and I heard that. That is not a seraphim, that is a cherubim in black skin. And he can be as confused about whether or not he is a fallen angel as you can be about whether or not you are a rising angel. Inside his body, there's turmoil or legions pulling him in different directions. That is the devil getting the best of him. Because the righteous come in. The righteous are looking at the signs of the time and they come in. They don't waste no time. They're looking at the world, the events of the world, they're looking at plagues and diseases and they, they go right in. You understand what I'm saying? If you want to read the Revelations and get a better understanding, the 19th chapter. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Allahumma or Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our Creator, which they say is God. For true and righteous are His judgments. For He has judged the great whore, which is Babylon, the city that you're in, which did corrupt the earth, the whole world, with her fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hands, meaning the prophets and the saints that this harlot has destroyed, just to prevent the truth. And again, they, meaning the righteous inside heaven, who made it to heaven, which you read in the 23rd chapter, is referred to as the crystal city, said, Alahuma or Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. This is all a continuation of the book of Revelation chapter 18 about the smoke of Babylon. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped Allah that sat on the throne saying, Amen. It's over meaning. Hallelujah. Okay? And a voice came out of the throne saying, Alhamdulillah. Praise our Creator Allah, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, taqwa, that's mustaqim, both small and great, be he a king or a servant. And I heard, as it were, a voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah. That was an applause to the righteous who endured to the end, who got the crown of life, who stayed in the tabernacle, will be saying, Hallelujah, that, that it's over. For the Lord, Allah, omnipotent, reigneth. His steps above all ye gods and the Messiah and all of your prophets. Now the whole boundless universe who is Rabbil Alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Malik al yawmuddin he now rules as the omnipotent source over all. Now it says, let us be glad and rejoice. Remember Jesus said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad because great is your reward in heaven. Speaking about the people who would be slandered and persecuted and spoke out against false. He said, blessed are the persecuted. Remember that? Blessed were man shall revile thee and say, all manners of evil against thee falsely for my name's sake because great is your reward in heaven. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, he says. You understand? So it's the people we're talking about on the inside that we have to worry about people reviling and saying all manners of evil against us. They have all kinds of stories about Jama and Allah in the Islamic Hebrews. It tells us to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And it follows up in that latter day, in, that, in the seventh uh, verse of the of 19th chapter. 
Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. And throughout the scriptures, whenever they speak of the marriage of the Lamb, they say it's to the tabernacle of the Most High. They say that it comes down as prepared as a bride, which we'll read as we go on. He'll prove it. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed. That means you were given the right. That's why it says it was granted that you should wear your white. It was granted that you should be arrayed in fine linen. Many Christian preachers try to imply that this wearing of white is a symbolic of your purity. No, it uses the word linen, which is a cloth, a white cloth. That John the Baptist and all the righteous have known for centuries to wear. And now if you go to look to Mecca, you see all Muslims come from different parts of the world wearing all kind of flowery colors and stupid costumes. But when they get around Beit Haram, in Mecca, around the Kaaba, Allah Ta'ala tells them, be like Nabi Ibrahim al Hanifan and wear that white, that simple white. But all throughout the Quran it tells us to be like Nabi Ibrahim. But they feel they can wear any color when they're outside of Mecca. No, Allah Ta'ala tells us by high, by the pilgrimage, by the hajj, that we should be wearing white at all times. And that's a sign of our purity, but it's also the garment of the righteous. Clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. That means we are living in the image and following in the sunnah of all of those prophets who was up until Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, Muhammad who was Khatim Anbiya, the seal of all of those prophets. Number nine, and he said unto me, write, speaking to John of course, write, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of Allah. And I fell at his feet to worship him. John, when he heard this, wanted to fall down and prostrate himself at the feet of the angel, who was Mikael, the one who walks him through the books of Revelation, to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Isa. I am one of your brethren, because Jesus said, I send this angel in, in Revelation chapter 1 to signify my word, you see. And he's telling him, I am also a testimony, because he was speaking in the reign of Jesus' time, where John, where the Kalima would be completed with the word becoming flesh as Jesus, not as Muhammad at that time. So they would say, La ilaha illallah, Isa Rasulullah. The way we after Muhammad came say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So that's why he claimed testimony to Jesus at this point, because Muhammad had not yet come. And he was speaking about the future world. Worship Allah though. He made sure he put after the testimony of Jesus. Worship who? Worship Allah. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony of Jesus is merely a spirit of prophecy. But your worship is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. He's alone, has no partners. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the vestures dipped in blood. And his name is called Kalim, Allah, the word of Allah. In the Holy Quran they teach us that Jesus was called Kalim Allah also. He was filled, had the word of Allah with him. Alright? And the armies which were in heaven, notice to that, followed him upon the white horse, clothed in linen, white and clean. Now this is talking about after the thousand year million when the 144,000 had been taken up to the crystal city there to be groomed 
by the Messiah, Isa and Maryam, who even in Al Islam we acknowledge or you acknowledge, would return. You follow? Now the devil had been locked up for a thousand years and let loose on the world like he does in the book of Job. He let loose on the world the total temptation of all humanity. And at this point, those who had been in heaven for a thousand years, those first resurrectionists, are being ready to come back to wage war against the devil. I feel sorry for you people who don't make the first resurrection. Because when the devil is let loose from the pit on earth, he's going to wreak havoc that you've never felt before. And his day is approaching. 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he could smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treated the winepress. What are we speaking about? He's talking about the judgment that the Messiah and the 144,000 is going to pass upon the world and upon Satan. He's going to judge people by the tongue out of his mouth. The two-edged sword out of his mouth is to cut up lies like a serpent, a sting. He's going to come forth with truth. The two edges are backed up by the languages of prophecy, the speaking in tongues and in translation to make things clear in language. And this is the problem we have as teaching al-Islam here in America and trying to resurrect people is they say we, we spend too much time on the words. It's the meaning of words that make the scriptures clear because they called him the word. So you got to start with the words, the written word, and through that there you can make things clear. They said he's going to judge and rule by a rod of iron. There's going to be a lot of suffering because they use that same reading that rod to calculate the number of the beast and to calculate those who are in the tabernacle from those who have given themselves over to become Gentiles. The wine press is mentioned as being as high as the bridle of a horse in Revelation, which is three feet from the ground where it says blood will run through the streets at the height of a bridle. The horse's bridle stands three feet from the ground. The forceness of the wrath of the Almighty Allah, these 144,000 will come forth with the power of Allah to sting the world. And he had on his vesture and on his thighs the name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the reason why they refer to Isa and Maryam as King of Kings and Lord of Lords is because David himself was a Messiah, which is clearly mentioned in Psalms chapter 2. Every time you see the word anointed in the Bible, the word anointed means Messiah, Messiah, or Mesha, or Misha, depending on whether it's Arabic, Aramic, or Hebrew. But they'll translate Messiah into the word anointed when they don't want to mislead people into the truth by accident. <laughs> so they make you think that anointed is one word and Messiah is the next. Any biblical or Bible dictionary, you look up the word Messiah, they'll translate it anointed. So they had to point out that this final Messiah here was King of Kings. His judgment is greater than the books of the kings. Because they had prophets who wrote the books called the Book of Kings. And David taught out of that stuff in the Psalms of Solomon. And they were saying that this one is the King of Kings. Because he comes with grace. Grace is nitam for forgiveness. And the Lord of Lords, he's over every rabbi that have ever existed. He's the master of all the rabbis. He no longer falls under Cohen. He no longer falls under Levitical law because he was not a Levite. So they had to establish that he was higher than all of them. Okay? And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heavens come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Lord or the great creator why did this happen because if we go back to the books of the prophet Noah 
and how he was summoned before the judgment of the world of his time to gather all the animals together. Here we're speaking about the judgment again. And remember the first time the world was going to be judged, it was judged by water. But this time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it shall be judged by fire. So he called the birds to bear witness. Number 18, that ye may eat of the flesh of the kings and the flesh of the captains and the flesh of the mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great of course the next question comes up what is he talking about about eating the flesh do you people have a Quran in there if you do turn your Quran to Surah Al-Fil which is the Surah of the Elephant will someone read it Okay, this is the 105th surah of the Quran. It says, In the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, and the the merciful. Hast thou not seen how the Lord dealt with the people of the elephants? Pause. The people of the elephants were Abraha and them who came through Ethiopia, from through Yemen, through Ethiopia, to try to take the Kaaba because they knew of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah Ta'ala protected the Kaaba this way. They came forth with elephants riding to, to conquer and stomp all the people around the Kaaba and put their gods and their idols there. But Allah protected the Kaaba this way. Go ahead. Okay, second verse. Is, did he not manifest their scheming to destroy the Kaaba? Was given an error, was a grave error? And consequently on them he sent airborne flocks throwing hot stones from Sijil. By throwing the stones from Sijil, he made their flesh raw, like kernels of quickly consumed corn and chewed hay. That's it. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabi feel. Alam yaja'al kaydahum fi ta'neel. If you make note that Tairin in the third verse again, could you read it? Consequently, consequently on them he sends airborne flocks. Tairin or the birds. He used Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the birds. This, by the way, is where Alfred Hitchcock got his picture concept. He used the birds to attack these people who came out against the Meccans while he was against the followers of Rasulullah This is how he protected them. And he will protect the 144,000 again when he calls the birds. I just want you to see that a lot of biblical quotes match directly the Quranic meaning. If they just read the Quran, they'd see what they meant. If you ask the average Christian preacher, what this is talking about, they wouldn't even know. Ezekiel 38, 18 also will speak about it. 19, again. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So now the beast, the devil himself, had got his armies together and they are preparing to war against El Messiah and the 144,000. Notice that this is a replica of that story in the Quran, Surah so Tufil, when those horsemen on elephants came to make war against Mecca, where Rasulullah Muhammad would be born and fell. Number 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, not prophets, a false prophet because there will be a flatterer who is going to come in the name of the Messiah and deceive the world Daniel teaches a false Christ who's going to rise up and fool the whole world we call him Messi as Dajjal in Islam 
many Muslims are going to drop their deen and follow this false prophet that worked miracles before him. And this false prophet would have the power to perform miracles. Many times people ask me concerning Christian preachers and how do they heal. The devil has the power to heal. The devil was an angel. If I, you can heal in the name of Jesus Christ and be wrong. You can heal in the name of Buddhism and be wrong. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. His miracles and his falseness as a false Christ is how he's going to deceive people and give them the mark. Now in Al Islam, Rasulullah Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, throughout the hadith, they keep making mention of you know the followers of Masih al Dijala because they'll have a kafir on their forehead, the letter K. Now, what they have misinterpreted is that they have people looking for a letter K when it doesn't mean that. The letter K is symbolic of the kafir. And when you look at people who are living in the image of the beast, and if you look at the outer world today, and if you look at the president of Egypt, no beard, no dark hair, suit, tie, he's dressed like any other Britishman. And the same thing would be Syria, Jordan, Morocco and even Saudi Arabia and up until recently even the Sudan these people are living in the image of the beast therefore when you see them you see a K you see a Kafir they have the mark of the beast on them the whole Muslim world is making a transition from following the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad living the way he had prescribed for us to live dressing the way he dressed, eating the way he ate, praying the way he prayed, and doing things the way he did it. Now we are following the hadith of men from different parts of the world who are altering them to suit their culture. Now there's Muslims dressing like Pakistanians and like Afghanistanians and some Arabs come here and they dress like Americans, put on little silly hats and plaid shirts and and go to college in NYU and give up total Sunnah and then call themselves Sunnis and look at an Ansar and say we're not Muslims. What a joke. It tells you that you can expect to see them with the mark of the beast. And when one of them walks up to you and Arab, I don't care how, what country he's from, he walks up to you, the first thing you ask him, are you a Muslim? Ask him, is he a Muslim? And if he says, yeah, I'm a Muslim, I'm from Egypt, say that don't make you a Muslim. <laughs> Following the way of the Prophet Muhammad, he left two things for you, Quran or Sunnah. Following his way is what makes you a Muslim. And if I look at you from head to toe and I don't see you dressed in the lights of him, then you're not a Muslim. I don't care what white Arabs told you, how much flattery they give you, so that they can make friends with Christians and Jews after Allah tells us not to. Christians and Jews don't even understand their own doctrine. They're fighting each other. Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse 114 tells you that. They don't even know what they're talking about. They're fighting and they both have the same scripture. Or they're disputing about Abraham and their books came after him. Yet the Muslim world is trying to emulate all these kings are trying to act like and live like the American world. An average Muslim, you see, if he calls himself a Muslim and he's not in a Sunnah, say you're not a Muslim yet. Say you may be trying to become a Muslim. And I don't care if you're born in Sudan, or born in Egypt, or born in Morocco, or born in Saudi. Now, if you're not just in the Sunnah, and you haven't found your way to the Sunnah of Rasulullah, don't tell me you're a Sunni. Because you're a hypocrite. And then, that worship, his image. Our people now worship his image. Our women straighten their hair, they put them in blue contacts. Stop trying to live in his image and put back on your garb of righteousness. And all you people who slid out of your jelly and slid back into American clothes and plaid caps and checkered shirts, slide right back into the path of righteousness. Because judgment is near. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, which is another word for sulfur. The 16th Revelation 13 chapter would also support that. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon 
the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowl were filled with their flesh. 1517 in Revelation, we'll back it up, and 18, as well as 1716 in Revelation, we'll back it up. Those that are left over after the devil and the false prophet is cast in a fire and brimstone, then the 144,000 will destroy you themselves. You will be destroyed also. Those who are the remnant will be slain. You'll be destroyed. When we destroy you, we'll be with the tongue of our mouths. The way the Ansar Allah community is coming forth now into the world, and we put everybody on the spot, and we question everybody's teachings, and we make them question their leaders, and their leaders can't answer, so all they do is they don't believe those people. <laughs> but you cannot stop the truth of the Ansar Allah community. And that's what they know. All of Sunni Muslims and the Shiites and all the different groups and the Bilalians and the Black and anybody that hates our community, they can talk about everything about our morality, about the moral conduct. They can create all kinds of stories on I heard this and I heard this. I heard he has all these millions of wives and all these millions. They can create all that. They would say, if you say, forget the man. Okay, he don't count. What about the truth? Let me ask you some questions about the Quran or about the scripture. It can't go. That's what you judge by. Let's read on. Now we move on to number 20. And I saw an angel come down, this is Mikhail, from heaven, having a key of the bottomless pit and great chains in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and saint and bound him a thousand years of Revelation 12 9 who will give you another description of Satan now Mikhail comes down after this after a thousand year period after the rage war and he grabs a hold of Satan the false prophet remember is already gone now Satan himself is left what does he do with him? he's going to bound him up again and bounds him a thousand years and casts him into the bottomless pit and shuts him up and sets a seal upon him. You see that ring on your finger? It has a six pointed star and crescent. That ring you wear on your finger with the six pointed star and crescent is the seal that can bound the devil. You can't get around him. How many of y'all who wear that ring have had a devil walk up to you and say, Do you know what that means? Have you know it? Bear witness. White man will see that ring on your finger and say, Excuse me, can I see that symbol a minute? And his face will fall apart. He'll go, uh, What does that mean? Is that, is that Islam? Is that Judaism? Oh, what are you? You say, I'm an Islamic Hebrew. He goes, A what? An Islamic Hebrew. I follow the religion of Abraham. He says, It's not possible. You can't be an Islamic and be a Hebrew. I say, You're right. You can. I can. I am the nation that Father Abraham was talking about. You knew I was coming. You knew I'd come like a thief in the night. You didn't think we was going to tell you he was here. While Honorable Elijah Muhammad was preaching, and while Noah Jalali was preaching, and while Sheikh Dawah was preaching, and while the Sunni Muslims and Ahmadiyya was preaching, we wasn't preaching, we were building. We came like a thief in the night. And he just looked around and we were here. When we looked around, the rest of them, they said, I just looked around and they were gone. <laughs> He just looked around and we're here. And now he has to contend with this new thing. The doctrine is unstoppable. He knew it. But that seal, you better get your seal and keep it on. Because it's your protection against it. Don't let nobody fool you. 